Hey heroes, welcome to another shameless episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is sponsored in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to contribute and vote in monthly polls, then you can sign up for an amount of your choosing over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below along with other places you can find me. This week's tale begins with a high school student named Rick Wilder. Timid and unassuming, Rick sought to earn the respect of his classmates. An opportunity to do so seemed to present itself when a group of bullies came to him with a task. They had learned that their chemistry teacher, Professor Boyd, often worked nights at a location called Danmark Laboratories. Suspecting that his office desk contained a copy of their upcoming midterm exam, the bullies pressured Rick into sneaking inside so that he could steal it. Rick nervously agreed, taking with him his backpack, which contained his favorite comfort food, Combo's Stuffed Snacks. The bag also contained a variety of Marvel comic books, which recounted the adventures of various heroes and villains. When Rick reached the professor's office, he saw that the light was still on, but decided to peek inside before leaving. What he saw, however, was Boyd being threatened by agents of Advanced Idea Mechanics, who sought to steal a device he was developing to expand the limits of human potential. Rick attempted to save his professor by causing a distraction, but this only caused the AIM agents to set their sights on him. Taking a wrong turn while fleeing, Rick inadvertently fell into a live experiment along with his comics and combos. Frightened and exposed to bizarre radiation, Rick ate another combo snack which seemed to energize him. When he emerged, he found himself transformed into a composite being with the powers of over a dozen Marvel heroes and villains. He had become Combo Man. He quickly struck back against the AIM agents, discovering several of his abilities, including flight, super strength, enhanced senses, and magnetic control. However, things took a turn when he was challenged by the Super Adaptoid, an AIM android with the power to copy superhuman abilities. Fearing what would happen if the Adaptoid absorbed his numerous superpowers, Combo Man attempted to end the fight quickly. But in doing so, he burned through his remaining energy, reverting back to Rick Wilder in front of his professor. Fortunately, he quickly realized that the key to his transformation lay in the combos themselves. Consuming another of the tasty treats, he found himself re-energized and transformed once again into Combo Man. Wasting no time, he attacked his android opponent with multiple powers before it could adapt, defeating both it and the AIM agents. With the day saved, Rick departed, having learned the folly of trying to fit in with the wrong crowd and the dangers of peer pressure. Now, as you may have guessed, Combo Man here was more of a marketing gimmick than an actual character. Created as part of a marketing campaign for Combo's snacks with ads that ran in Marvel Comics in the mid-1990s. Unlike the Hostess advertisements from 20 years prior, which featured various Marvel heroes encountering original villains in one-page ads, the driving force behind the appeal of Combo Man was a sweepstakes, a contest in which astute Marvelites were challenged to identify all 14 characters that made up Combo Man's design. And so for a bit of fun, now, close to 30 years later, let's see how many you can identify. Thanks to a trio of trading cards, we do have here the official answers, so as we go through this, feel free to type out your guesses in the comments and let me know how many you got right. Don't worry, we'll take a closer look at each individual section before we reveal the answers. Let's start with his head and upper body, so pause here if you'd like to guess for yourself. Some of these should be pretty easy. From the top of his head, we have the Incredible Hulk. That recognizable visor undoubtedly belongs to Cyclops of the X-Men. The rest of the helmet, meanwhile, is what Iron Man was sporting in the mid-90s. The shoulders and accompanying cape are classic Magneto. The top of the chest is none other than the Punisher, while beneath that we have Captain America. It's kind of funny how in the promotional comic, the combination of the skull and the star symbols form what looks like an angry tooth. Strangely appropriate for a logo associated with salty snacks. Alright, next up we have the midsection and upper thighs. 
Some of these are pretty tricky, so take a moment to pause now if you'd like to make your guesses, but remember that the arms would line up better with the matching part of the body if he lowered his hands a little bit. Alright, ready? Let's go. For the biceps and upper abdominal, we have Sabertooth. The stripe on the arm is probably the biggest clue there. The section below that is a little bit harder to identify based solely on this image, but if you look closely, you may recognize it as Carnage. That one is a bit more obvious in the promotional comic where the symbiote tendrils are actively coming off of his elbows. Now, the waist and forearms are going to be trickier if you don't remember what this particular character was wearing at the time. And that's because this section is based on Daredevil's black armor. His hands and pelvis are more obviously Spider-Man, but his upper thighs are possibly the trickiest one to identify. Those belong to Century. A pretty new character at the time, and somewhat obscure one now, he made his debut in the book Forceworks, which featured a team of Avengers led by Iron Man in the aftermath of the West Coast Division's disbanding. The Iron Man animated series from around the same time used elements from that book, notably the team's roster, so you may remember Century from that show as well. Alright, only three pieces left to identify, so let's have a look at his legs and feet. Pause now if you would like to guess for yourself. Alright, ready? Good. The flaming kneecaps are not a trick question. They do indeed belong to the Human Torch. As for those shiny shins, if you answered Iceman for those, that's incorrect. They are actually the Silver Surfers. Finally, let's give some respect to anybody who recognized Combo Man's shoes because those belong to Gambit. Rather, they're the bottom half of his boots, since the conceit of Combo Man's design makes them a lot shorter than usual. Anyway, let me know how many that you got in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this short little diversion. And if not, well, don't worry too much. I've got another deep dive into the history of the Marvel Universe cooking up for next week, so tune in and we'll once again turn our attention to the Great White North for another full-length episode. But now we are left with the question, whatever happened to Combo Man? Well, not much, it seems. After the initial contest and promotional comic, he didn't appear again until 2019's Ziggy Pig and Silly Seal one-shot, in which he was a guest at a low-budget Comic-Con being held in an alley behind a closed-down laundromat. Normally I'd say we haven't seen the last of characters we talk about, but something tells me that a background extra in a funny animal comic might be the best we can hope for when it comes to Rick Wilder. At least until the makers of Combos want to partner with Marvel Comics for another marketing campaign. In the meantime, that is all I have for you this week, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it on your favorite social media. As I referenced earlier, I do have a longer video in the works coming out next week, so come back in seven days for that. And let me give a special shout out to all of my Patreon and Ko-fi supporters, Twitch subscribers, and YouTube members who do help make the channel possible. By signing up for any ongoing amount on any of these platforms, you will get your name in these special thanks, but Patreon is the one that helps determine what topics get covered on the channel via monthly polls. That being said, if there is anything in particular you want me to talk about, then be sure to let me know in the comments. But that is all I have for you guys for now, and so until next time, true believers, Excelsior!